Hello, and it's Kat Carter. Welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Um, Cosmic Upgrade. Alright, so this is my setup for cooling down the uh, copper or whatever it is that comes out of the volcanoes. Copper or gold or iron, whatever. Um, so what I've done is I pumped in crude oil into here now. And it's basically the first two levels are full, and then the last level has about 15, a little bit more, depending on um, where you go. I've set the hydro sensor basically to 15 kilograms. So as soon as it goes over there, over that 15, um, this valve shuts off, and no more oil goes in. You can see I've had a few eruptions already, so. Um, some of it's converted to petroleum, and what should happen on the next one is it'll be converted to natural gas. And I've got an atmospheric sensor here. When basically the pressure gets up to I think a thousand grams, I've got it set at. Um, then this pump will go, and it'll pump it out. So that's uh, we've got two seconds. And what should happen is the gold should just drop down. Yep. So the gold will drop down and automatically start to cool by having some of it. Yeah, so some of the what the pump out, there'll be polluted oxygen as well because that's the environment it's in. Um, so it's putting out, uh, pumping out the natural gas and the polluted oxygen. You could, to avoid anyone having to go in there to collect it, you can actually, or you should be able to just to sweep it. So, uh, do you still get it? Yeah. So you could put a couple of sweepers, one there and uh, one in here. Um, and that would collect. That should collect anything that went on the ground. Or if you just had the one volcano, obviously you could put it in there and that would collect it. So this would work the same as with just one as it does with two. Obviously you'd just have to cut off there and you'd have the pump up here somewhere. So basically for the pump and 10 watts for the liquid shut off, that's basically all you need. And you need to pump the oil in obviously first. But that means that it acts as a heat sink, so the oil will absorb all the heat and it'll use that heat to convert to natural gas. So you don't have to worry as much about um, getting rid of it. I think this is going to do it a few times. It is warm in there, but Obviously, it, you just let it add into your base, it will get warmer. So I think absorbing the heat and using it to make natural gas is a good way of doing it. And this setup basically should work perfectly. And if you auto sweep it, then you can just put the um, have a delay on it, or you can basically have a switch so it only picks up the copper once it's dormant, dormant, and it has a chance to cool down. So let the volcano do its thing, and once it stops, then flip the switch once the copper's had a chance to cool down, to collect it all. So it is, yeah, so the copper will basically cool down to the temperature of the oil. Uh, you're going to one, two, one, two cycles. Uh, so that, I think, is the way I'll go forward with dealing with the heat from volcanoes. Because I think it's a good way. Now, I set up... Uh, I have finished setting up my gas filters and this one's actually going to go at the front and be filtered. I'm also, where's this pumping from? Uh, pumping from up there and I'm also pumping from outside, where am I? Outside the base. Um, so I've also got one down here that pumps but it only does it uh, once pressure gets greater than 400. Just because I've pumped out most of this area and there's no point pumping tiny little bits of gas. Alright, so with my filtration system, that's coming in, it'll get sorted. If any of these, like if there's ever oxygen here, um, that bypass will kick in and it'll start going around there. And that's the same with, with all of them. Now it's not going to happen at the moment because I've got obviously a fair bit of room in all of these. Now I know I've got the um, oxygen out but basically once it gets up to enough pressure I tend to turn it on and just pump it directly into the base. 
just to save on algae, which is slowly going down. And also, once there's enough pressure, I'll just pump the natural gas straight into the uh, natural gas generators. Then I can do the same with the hydrogen. Now, these have got germs in them, but obviously they're all going to die off anyway. Now, with the polluted oxygen, what have we got? So, I've got the polluted oxygen in here, and basically, I've got the setup so it pumps through down into here. Um, it hits some deodorizers, which obviously will convert the polluted oxygen. It's only 58 grams, maybe it's uh, too small an amount for it to do it. don't know. Right, so what I've got is a sensor here. There we go. So the sensor's kicked in to say there's enough pressure. Uh, I wonder why it's getting included oxygen up there. Uh, Alright, well I'm going to have to review this one. Because... I was thinking that no polluted oxygen would get past three deodorizers, but possibly... Um, I'm wondering if it was there from the start. Uh, now, are you being sorted? Yeah, so this will, the polluted oxygen will go back, or the, the yeah, polluted oxygen will go back into here anyway. And I'm thinking there might have been some polluted stuff up here to start with. that polluted oxygen stuck at 58 grams. Almost makes me wonder if something's bugged out. I'll let it pump for a little bit. Uh, just to... Yeah, I'm not really fussed about a little bit of slime lung. Especially in here, it's going to die off anyway. Because it won't survive on oxygen. So that's fine. We'll get uh, some slime lung in there, which I'm not worried about. Uh, what I do want to do is to see if I can get, um, hmm. so if we deconstruct that one, see if we can get the polluted gas, uh, polluted oxygen to move. Alright, so that might be a bug. So you go there. So it did move. I find it a bit weird that the deodorizer didn't actually work. Yeah, let me put it back. Alright, so I think with this one you've got to make sure that the polluted oxygen isn't in. Although what I could do is basically do that, do that. Basically, just pump as soon as it gets above a thousand. Uh, no, deconstruct you. Put you on auto. Um, I think that will work. Yeah, that would work. Ah, right. so that didn't quite work how I wanted it to. Now I don't really understand why. I'm wondering if there was already polluted oxygen up here and that was causing the problem. That's right, because all it does is pump it back to the start, and then the, any polluted oxygen will go in there. So pretty much well, what I could do is just have the uh, atmos sensor there, um, and just basically pump it through there. Anything that doesn't get converted to oxygen will go back to the polluted oxygen. 
that'll be fine. And the oxygen will come down here, and the slime lung will slowly, uh, slowly die off. In fact, if you have a look at it, slime lung's up here, but there's no slime lung down here. So uh, where's it? Cuts off about halfway. Yeah. So that's the gas. Um, now my attempt to cool has not gone very well. Yeah. Uh, how about we change this to if it's above 100, do it. So basically, I think the f because it stops and cools down. I think the fertilizer and the uh, metal refinery, which I've been using quite a bit, is heating it up too much. Yeah, we've got 40s all through here. And this uh, natural gas geyser has superheated this area as well. So all the heat is um, going into here. Now the one thing I did want to do... Yeah, even that thing's at 6, 6.2. And the hydrogen is at 6.2. Yeah, so there's a lot of... Um, a lot of heat going into this thing. Well, that's all waiting fuel. Oops. I wonder if that had something to do with the uh, cooling not working. Someone, turn that on. Uh, I think possibly at some point I turned that off and I forgot that I turned it off. Come on, go, 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 go. Yay! There we go. Because this should take out what is it, 400 watts heat production. Uh, so we've got right, refineries. So they're only 15 watts each. Uh, the metal refinery is 80 watts. Um, so we've got our plastic generation is 162. And 50, so 210, 290, and the fertilizers weren't that much, were they? Yeah, they were like 290, 15. Yeah, so there's only about 320 odd watts of heat. Yeah, so is this dropping it down any? So it's coming in at 35. Dropping down to 26. What I did want to do is, um, now that I've got a whole bunch of copper ore, the uh, refined copper ore, which I can't access because I forbid them to go in there. Um, what I want to do is get this uh, refined copper and then make the make the radiant liquid pipes just to see how much uh, it cools it down, how much it changes. So these things now at what's its temperature? 0 0.4, hydrogen's at 1, 0 0.8. Yeah. So 24, 27. so it's going in about 34 and it's coming out so it's losing about 10 yeah, still still very hot but you can already see it's started to cool down a little bit because it's sucking out all this heat uh, what I'm curious about is if I put all this to radiant pipes and maybe just put the occasional radiant pipe around here just in little not the whole thing as radiant pipes but just little patches just to see what it's like on the heat so what I might do is I'll do that off camera and then I'll cut back uh, once I've put all the radiant pipes in. Basically we're just gonna make a you go there you go there. We're gonna make a little dumping ground where I can put all the oil and then I'll pump it back into the system. Ah, so we'll uh, do extract you we'll leave it here and I'll cut back to when I've done the uh, radiant pipes. 
Alright, I'm back. So what I've done is put radiant pipes all throughout this bit and I've just put them in uh, wait for the day to start. Uh, sections. So there's not let's see it on that. So I didn't put radiant pipes everywhere because it would take too long to get the materials. So just where the basically machines are for the most part, I've tried to put in the uh, radiant pipes. What I do want to do is... Yeah. So... You can't go because you put it up. Yeah, I'm going to try to get all the machines working at once just to... Actually, I might need that. Yeah, right, so you're done. Yeah, we'll just disable this for the moment. Right, so let's keep that going. Oh, no, not save order, okay. You. Save good. Alright. So when I left it for a little bit off camera while I was getting everything set up, the temperature did slowly drop, and it would have, I suspect over a long, long time it would have come down. But with uh, the radium pipes, things are happening a lot faster. So it's going in at the moment at... 20, well, it's varying now, somewhere from 27 to 30, and it's basically going out, uh, where are you, at 4.7, 4.4, so it's dropping a good 25 degrees, basically, which is, I think, pretty good. We certainly are pulling out enough heat, so it's taking a bit, but right now, this is dropping down what to 18, 19, it was at 40. And what I think will happen is basically once this bit cools down enough, then the next bit will cool down. You can even see the bits where the radiant pipes are are already cooling down, they're already sucking out the heat. Now, not much is happening here at the moment just because once it gets to here, it's Yeah, up to 27. But even, basically, this ambient temperature is the same as the pipes. So, I think it'll work outstanding. And what I'd like to do... Um, how much refined iron have we got? Not enough. Yeah, let's go make some refined iron, and then we'll make some... Yeah, and some lime... In the rock crusher. Uh, get some lime, we'll make a bit more carbon. How much coal have we got? 32. Uh, so we're chewing through our coal at a huge rate. I mean, it's not going to matter because we're not going to use it all, but basically, if I was continuing with the map, uh, I'd be running out of coal pretty fast. So I think. You really need to look at basically feeding food to hatches because you always got lots of food. Not to start with, but after a little bit, you should have lots of food. So I think basically growing food and converting it to coal might be the way you have to go because there's not really it's not really another good source of power. You can do. Obviously, you can go up to the surface and get the solar panels. But then you have to go clean off all the dust after the solar panels. What I was thinking is something like... Next turn. Uh, just for... Like, you'd have a raised bit, and then you'd maybe have something here with your solar panel. And you'd have your um, shield up top. And basically, you'd have to just come in and clean it every time. But maybe dig out a big area all the way down lower so it's not as far for your dupes to go to clean out all the regolith and uh, other stuff that falls down. So that's already... Already um, more stuff's there after it's cleaned out. So the surface, I don't think, is 
You can get some good stuff, but I don't think it's the main thing. Uh, have you done your... You've done a couple. Um, so the crude oil going in there now is at 30. Uh, if you look at our temperature... Yeah, so this is hot, but what I suspect is... Even the really hot liquid is just going to cool straight down once it gets through here. So... Oof. What are you? 63. So we'll, we'll see when 63 degree stuff goes in. Uh, where are we? Where's the really hot oil? Hmm. I want my hot oil, please. Hold up. Where should I be looking? Alright, get out of there. Down, 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 down. Ah. So we should see it through here. Well, unless it's already called out. Oh, there we go. 42, 43. There we go. But it's already 30, 40 when it gets to there, so we got some warm stuff coming in now. So there's a 40s coming through, so we'll see if there's a big jump in. Yeah, so the crude oil temperature is going up. Alright, now, yeah, so it's hovering around the 7 degrees. So even with 40 degrees coming in, so it's taking over 30 degrees out of the temperature. And obviously this stuff is still cooling down. This is cooling down. Uh, what are you? That metal refinery is heating up. But I suspect... Uh, why have you got no power? Why has... Ooh, that's why. That's why you got no power. Because I accidentally removed you. Uh, what do you want? Now we'll just do... No, we'll do copper. No, I don't want automation, I want power. Do, do conductive wire. No. Well, that would explain why that's not going. Uh, there we go, back to temperature. Alright, uh, so this might heat up a little bit, but not enough to do anything, I don't think. So I think when this metal refinery is going it does have issues uh, and this is probably <laughs> yeah this is really warm now but that's fine because the thermo sensor doesn't um, read the temperature of the poly polymer press anyway because that's what's at now 50 and that's saying it's 43 so that's fine I don't mind if this gets hot when that gets hot uh, is it sleep time? yeah it is yeah. My computer will figure out all the stuff for the day. Now uh, someone will come and do that wire. How much copper we got? 1.6 tons. Heaps of copper. Alright, so the metal refinery basically chews up a lot of heat. So we'd need to give it um, crude oil in there is cool though. We'd need to like give that brakes so that the whole area can cool down. And seeing that it's not on, you can see a lot of the heat's just being sucked out of the area. Now, it's still warm over here just because we haven't got the radiant pipes, but there's some there and that'll cool that down. So you can see, even though that heated up really quickly, it's dropped down quickly. Um, I might just let it run for a few minutes just to see how cold we can get it and if we can get all the machines running at once and see what happens. Alright, I've run it for a little bit just to see uh, the effects and what I'm finding is with the um, radiant pipes, because they basically just became the same temperature as whatever they're absor absorbing, um, this natural gas geyser here is basically just heating everything up 
um, and it's not actually cooling everything down. This bit's cooled, but basically, right, I've now I've put some insulated tile there just to try to um, restrict the heat to sort of over here so it doesn't chew it up. But what was happening is the heat was coming into the radiant pipes and basically the oil was automatically going up to the um, higher temperature. Because this is super hot, so the radiant pipes were just making the oil go up to 20 something and that in effect was just making everything else 20 degrees odd. But it's getting a little bit better now. I think um, sort of closing this off so more of just the normal pipes were cooling it down and less of the radiant pipe. So the radiant pipe wasn't absorbing all the heat straight away. So that seems to, yeah. Yeah, so it's dropping down to 14.8 now. So I don't think um, the nullifier can handle basically a natural gas geyser in terms of absorbing all the heat. But this seems to be working well. Oh, new day. And obviously this is still pumping, but not all the heat is going through. So it does work. Uh, now with one thing I did notice, with the radiant pipes, I'm having the um, liquid pipe thermo sensor is basically a waste of time in effect. Because what was happening is with the radiant pipes, the temperature is basically the same throughout the entire thing just about. So what would happen is the sensor would stop the oil going through and then basically the temperature would normalize across all of the tiles and then the, everything had to cool down so in effect it was like doing a batch process where the, a lot of it was cooling down and then it would go um, so I just made it continually run and that basically works better because it stops at a really long pause where everything's trying to get to the exact same temperature and obviously as you can see it will cool down stuff so I think that's yeah and even that's cooling down a little bit so I think doing this, the gas can still do its thing where it'll push. Um, so that will still pump, that'll still do its thing, maybe. Uh, yeah. uh, there's too much gas, I think. Yeah, too much pressure. Uh, so that's probably also helping it too. But either way, I think the... Oh, oops. Either way, this will work. I just needed some adjustments once I stuck in the radium pipes. Um, I don't know that you could do continual production um, without it overheating, but I certainly think if I didn't have to cool this um, hot air from the natural uh, geyser, I think that this whole thing would cool down extremely quickly. Um, this is going down. Point uh, one might drop to thirteen. Um, this was sitting at 20 before, so as long as you're not trying to suck in um, massive amounts of heat, I think this will work fine. I think sort of cutting that off so it only had this little bit to absorb the heat has actually worked really well in terms of getting the cool to the rest of the area. So I think if this ran, it would um, it would cool down the whole thing and it would work. So I'm going to leave it uh, there. The new update's coming out. Uh, hopefully this video will go up before the new update comes out. Um, I didn't really get to do a lot of the cosmic per se, but I mean in the end I didn't really need the resources. So it doesn't really matter. I would have liked to have uh, probably got a better supply of coal. What's my coal at? 46 tons because I dug some out. But um, natural gas is up. We've got a uh, volcano up, which is working well. Making lots of refined copper, yeah. We don't have to worry about refined copper ever again. And obviously that's pumping out natural gas as well on top of that, with basically not having to use any energy. Um, I'd probably readdress the polluted oxygen one. I suspect I wouldn't worry about the germ sensors. I'd just basically put it through some oxidizers, deodorizers I mean, 
and then just pump it into a tank and wait for the germs to die off. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's further in the base than I got last time, so and I, I think that could go on for a long time yet. Anyway, we'll call it there. Thanks for watching.